come back to the class. Uh, see, I told you that for second order, that is for beta value. beta values, what do we need? We need donor one side, acceptor one side in the middle pi, like this is a pi system, aromatic pi system. Okay. And so, this is, so therefore, it is donor pi and acceptor as we increase the pi, so will the value of beta. For example, this para nitro aniline in acetone gives 8 into 10 to the power minus 30 ESU unit, that is a unit into 10 to the power minus 30 unit. Okay. So, it is gives a value of 8 and in the same unit, it gives the value of 55 when I comes to this one, it is called dance, D A N S, because here we have more, here you have a 1 benzene, 2 benzene and then double bond, that means pi system is elongated. And thus, when we increase the pi system, one thing happens. Okay. Once you increase the pi system in a molecule, then what will happen? Its beta value increases, but, but there is one caution, something called trade off. What happens? Suppose when I excite this with light, okay, I am counting beta values. As I go down, the absorption maximum will come absorption maximum of this stuff, this uh, molecule will come to the low, uh, longer and longer wavelength. So, let me put it this way, this particular compound, suppose it gives here absorption maximum, this one will give little bit here. How about this? This may give all the way here. This is a visible range, suppose, and these are UV range somewhere. So, if that happens, what is the problem? Problem is that this is emission, right? This beta value we get from emission. How much emit? How much is the? How much is the? Uh, non-linear optically because of non-linear activity, how much is the beta value? It will always give less. Why? Because in this absorption, some light will be absorbed. Suppose there was no peak, then what will happen? Suppose there is no peak, so my beta value will be so big. Just suppose. Now, because this molecule itself absorbed, every molecule absorbs. So, where a molecule absorbs, we have to excite that place. So, it will emit and it will absorb also. So, because of this peak, my beta value will be erroneous. My beta value will be erroneous for this absorption peak. Erroneous means it will show lower value. That is why we have to use. So, therefore, after we know that this is the peak, this is my peak, then which light I am going to use? I am going to use a light here, because I have to light it up. You have to light it up, the, the material, and then it will give you beta value, gamma value, etcetera, etcetera. So, I have to heat it hit this molecule say dance with which light suppose dance uh, or suppose this one this particular one when n equal to 3 gives a peak here so this peak say around 4 400 nanometer therefore which light i am going to use i am going to use a light 1907 way down here 1907 
nanometer. So, this is called absorption transparency trade off. This is called absorption transparency trade off, okay? because I have to use this light and using this light I am going to see beta values, calculate beta values by looking at. So, therefore, you also understand why we always make when we find out the beta values or gamma values, we always take zinc 2 plus zinc 2 plus or say cadmium 2 plus or say copper 1 plus. Okay, because these are all D10 system. Being D10 system, they are all saturated, they are color colorless, they are colorless means no absorption, okay. Colorless and not only they are colorless, they will not going to interfere with beta values. So, this is a very important, they have no spectroscopic signature. D 10 being D 10. So, these are the some of the salient features we have to remember. So, this is for beta and this is for gamma, gamma because symmetric see both sides electron accepting and pi. So, a pi a and this is d pi d. So, these are all symmetric. So, therefore, for beta values we want d pi a or asymmetric electron uh, uh, asymmetric okay, electron polarization if you will and for uh, gamma value we always want symmetric electron delocalization. If we have symmetric electronic delocalization gamma value will be high and similarly beta value will be high when we have asymmetric delocalization. Okay, so, this is enough for this. You can read this and you might venture into going there, because this is a very, very important area of supramolecular chemistry. It has enormous possibilities in, in modern day photonics, because uh, from defense to state of the art equipment and what not, this is a very, very important area, okay, optical nonlinearity. And as a chemist, we can design, design different kinds of stuff, okay. So, this is enough. I will, as I told uh, already, I will give you, I uh, will give you one or two, uh, some typical uh, typical references from where you can know further. My, uh, my idea of teaching this course always has been, I introduce you to the main features of the current supramolecular chemistry and any of you might be interested in a particular area, then with the references you can go ahead. Okay. Now, I will tell you my last part of this with light. Okay. So, I will tell you a phenomenon, a phenomenon, okay. the phenomenon is as such, let me first draw a, pro, a protein. I cannot draw a protein, but I am trying. Okay. I am trying to draw a protein. I will I can show you a, what a protein looks like. This is the one a protein how it protein looks like. Okay. So, first let us see the problem, then we take solution slowly. So, this is the my this is my protein. Okay. So, this is my protein this funny looking structure is protein okay this uh, uh, this is beyond me to calculate okay this protein means you have um, uh, uh, you have amino acids polyamino acids okay protein 
out of that 20 essential amino acids that we have 3 phenyl alanine phenyl alanine tyrosine and tryptophan and tryptophan. These three amino acids are fluorophores, they, act, they can be, uh, they can act as fluorophore, because if you hit them with light, they can emit. Okay. So, they are fluorescence active, let us call it fluorescence active amino acids, there are three. So, here I am telling you a story. In this protein, okay, let us may make it little bit bigger. This is my protein. Okay. You do not see, I also cannot see what is the starting. See one point I can see and uh, other point I forgot. Oh, here. So, these are the two. This is a starting from here. So, amino and then acid part, carboxylate part. Okay. This is my protein. And in this protein, this is called active, this uh, point, this is called in this protein, this is called active site. Active site. Okay. There may be more than one active sites also, but mostly there are one active site. In active site, may be one metal ion or may be multi metal ion also active sites are there. Usually metal ions are there. So, let us talk about metalloenzyme that means always metals are there. So, in this metalloenzyme this is my active site okay. and this protein is essential in biology. So, this protein, proteins do all the biochemical reactions, okay. they are catalyst in effective chemical reactions in our body. So, they are essential, without a protein we will die. So, proteins are work horses, how they work? How they work? They work, suppose this metal ion is the active site, means where action takes place, here is the site where action will take place. If some action takes place, if some action takes place, Suppose here, suppose this is tryptophan, this one is tryptophan. Okay. How do I know this is tryptophan? Because I know extra structure of this. Okay. Or from NMR, say 2D NMR, uh, you can somehow you know that tryptophan is here. And when this particular, when this particular metal ion will do chemical function, when it is doing function, this tryptophan was, this tryptophan was like this, just an argument. This tryptophan was like this and when it is not working, when this metal active site is not working, this is in a relaxed position. Okay. So, tryp tryptophan, just assume tryptophan is here, when it is energized or it is about to react, this active site will react, then tryptophan will be like this. Okay. And when this active site is not reacting, tryptophan will be stable, highly stable. So, they always do like this. Okay. So, what I do here? I put a metal ion, I put, I put another synthesized fluorophore here, maybe I will put a different color for red color, this is my synthesized fluorophore okay. and what will be the for tryptophan, it will be synthesized fluorophore. Now, let me tell you another story. So, 
this is fluorophore 1, this is fluorophore 2. Fluorophore 2 is natural and fluorophore 1 is I put it here chemically. Okay. So, let me tell you another story now here, this is important. So, so this is intensity, intensity arbitrary unit okay. and this is wavelength lambda, wavelength in nanometer say. Okay. Now, this is okay. Now, this is excitation, excitation of this. You can excite it in a particular excitation spectra, okay. And then it will emit, if you excite it, it will emit. Emit is always at longer wavelengths that we know from our uh, knowledge of fluorescence. Fluorescence you have excitation spectra or say near like absorption spectra. So, absorption spectra forget uh, if you are not, inter, uh, not familiar with excitation let us call it absorption spectra then this is emission spectra. Emission spectra is always a, a, like a mirror image of absorption spectra except they come at longer wavelengths here. So, this is one. Now, for my fluorophore 2, this is fluorophore 2 say, this is fluorophore 2. So, now I go, I do with the one I put fluorophore 1, fluorophore 1. Fluorophore 1 is my compound. So, there what happens? This is absorption spectra and this is emission spectra. Okay. It is just a drawing, it cannot be like this perfect. So, this is important. This is emission. emission, emission and this is absorption. If you want, I can put black, black is suppose natural and this red is my compound emission, absorption. So, what have, what is, what does this mean? This means this picture means emission spectra of one fluorophore means natural fluorophore. Emission spectra of natural fluorophore and absorption spectra of my fluorophore, they have some overlap. They have some overlap. This is the overlap area. In that case, what happens? energy will be transferred from this excited, this emission. So, energy will be transferred from here to here. Okay. So, I will tell you again, there are two fluorophores, fluorophore 1, fluorophore 2. If the emission spectra of fluorophore 1 overlaps with the absorption spectra of fluorophore 2, then there will be energy transfer from fluorophore 1 to fluorophore 2. Okay. That means, fluorophore 2 is excited. So, therefore, what will happen? If I excite this fluorophore, if I excite this fluorophore, this will be excited and it will emit this is known as okay fred forster did that lot of work forster 
Forster resonance energy transfer. transfer okay four star resonance energy transfer so because uh, so this is called resonance energy transfer so what i do it again there is fluorophore 1 and fluorophore 2 i should write here this i made a absolute mistake this will be fluorophore 1 so, from 1 fluorophore, fluorophore 1, it will absorb light, okay, absorbs light energy, go to excited state and it will emit. Its emission spectra matches or overlaps with the absorption spectra of another fluorophore. When that happens, how do I know it matches? Because there is overlap. So, this is the matching point when it does like that, then energy will be transferred from here to here, because this will be in resonance. So, that is called Forster resonance energy transfer. In short, FRET. FRET. So, this FRET works in uh, solution phase. Okay. This FRET works in solution phase in solid phase is not it does not work it will work in some uh, this will work in solution phase most importantly efficiency of fret efficiency how much efficient efficiency of fret will depend upon distance between fluoro, uh, the two fluorophore efficiency of fret from one to the other will depend upon how far they are, 10 angstrom, 12 angstrom or 5 angstrom, things like that. Okay. They can be 10, 12 angstrom, no problem. That is point number one. Point number two is that my, fluoro, my uh, recipient, this fluorophore and this fluorophore, these two fluorophore must be oriented properly. Okay. If this fluorophore is like this and my uh, this fluorophore that we synthesize fluorophore and my uh, uh, krypton that tryptophan we have zeroed in this uh, tryptophan I said tryptophan uh, yes I said tryptophan if this tryptophan it also should be matching orientation. Suppose it is orientation is this. If the orientation is this, then it will not match, then the fret will be not be possible, fret will be minimum. Okay. But if it is matching and if the distance around 10 to 20 angstrom anywhere, then fret will be very successful and all energy will be transferred. Okay, so, this is fret. Now, let me tell, show some example and do accordingly. Then I will come back here. See, let me do this. First, write this compound. This is very important. You have to understand the uh, photophysical process. Occasionally, I make a goof this, 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 this nice one. Okay. Okay.
Okay. So, now this particular compound kryptan okay, is very easy because you can sequentially add, I have sequentially added anthracene and I have added another compound, another fluorophore. Anthracene is a fluorophore and this di azo remember, mm. okay. So, this part this compound this is nitro here. Okay. Now, it goes to about 10 to 30 angstrom this work. Now, what happens is anthracene, anthracene if you look at anthracene emission, okay. If you look at anthracene emission, this is anthracene emission. So, anthracene absorption is somewhere here and this is say around uh, 450 nanometer. This is uh, intensity, this is lambda nanometer wavelength. Okay. Now, what is the emission of uh, emission and absorption of this diazo? Diazo absorbs here. Diazo is simple, only one peak, not a peak like this, but a simply a peak. This is my diazo. So, what do I see? I see that there is a lot of overlap, there is a lot of overlap, because of this overlap, because of this overlap what will happen and dye absorption, this is emission, this is absorption okay, of diazo and absorption of dye of uh, this one will come somewhere here. Okay and emission is here, emission of diazo, because emission is always comes at longer wavelength. So, therefore, what will happen? If I put a metal ion here, I put a metal ion here, I am exciting it, say copper 2 you know that with a copper 2 gives a very strong gives a very strong emission band. I showed you, it gives a very emission band. So, emission band of anthracene, because nitrogen lone pair is there that. But what I see, if I excited this anthracene, I do not see any emission of anthracene. I see this, very little, this is anthracene emission and I see completely absorption of, completely emission of this one. This is the emission of, emission of diazo fluorophore. Okay. So, the time has, time is not there right now. So, I will stop and start this work again tomorrow, uh, again in the my next class. I like to complete it, I like to tell you in detail that what does this mean and how it is very important in understanding. Fret is a very important fluorescence technique to understand physiology. Thank you very much.